Uh, just like humans, you know, plants are sensitive to unhealthy air and all that stress from recent smoke that we've had because of the wildfires uh, could lead to leaves or even flowers falling off. But gardeners do not panic just yet. Joining us live with some expert advice on how smoke affects plant health, Drake Snodgrass, owner of Drake 7D's Landscaping and Garden Center. Good morning. Good morning, Jenny and Emily. How are you? Doing Good. well, thanks. Good to see you again. Uh, you know, I didn't think of this in all the wildfire stuff. We were talking about air quality and how it's hazardous for, for people and, and pets, but how is the smoke bad for plants? Well, I, I've got... Uh, good news, and I've got bad news, and I've got good news, and then I have some more good news. So, uh, <laughs> first of all, I think that, that plants like us quite a bit. Um, they actually breathe in the bad air, as we know, and, and uh, they breathe out oxygen and it keeps us humans alive, which is a good thing. And they grow and bloom each spring and kind of renew themselves and renew our, give us a sense of renewal. So plants, I think plants, if they could talk, they'd say they like us. Mm -hmm. So... Some bad news, though, is that during the smoke, the plants actually stopped breathing or almost stopped breathing. And uh, so that's not very good because the breathing of plants takes in CO2 and lets out oxygen. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, they shed some leaves, which uh, the, the reason for shedding the leaves is that the, uh, the top leaves got full of smoke and particles and, the, and stopped working. And so the plant knew this just by the way nature works and those leaves shed in order to let the lower leaves uh, pick up the light that was available and those leaves were clean and the and the uh, the stomata that uh, takes in the co2 was working and so the, the plant's pretty sharp cookie well that is good that yeah is good but, okay. I, but i feel bad our poor little plants have been holding their breath for, for a couple of weeks yeah now. <laughs> that's no good well and you know so many people are, are uh, they have vegetable gardens yeah, i know that's a big thing in our time. area and it's harvest time so what are some tips after all of this and all that the the plants went through well uh, first of all the plant the skin of vegetables and fruits don't absorb uh, the, the particles that might be floating around. And so uh, what I suggest is that you just wash them uh, an extra time or two, uh, even the ones you buy at the store. Uh, and that should be uh, all that you really need to do. Uh, they're they're going to be just fine and keep eating your, your fruits and vegetables. That's a good thing. If you have uh, a leafy vegetable like lettuce, you would want to take out some off some of the outside foliage uh, in order to kind of get rid of any particles. The other thing I'd say is that if you did have a garden near where a building burned, say out Estacada Way, uh, you'd want to be a little bit more careful because a building inside potentially would have some hazardous material that might have burned and made it to your, to your garden. Mm, okay, mm. yeah, something to watch out for this year. I know we've talked about this in the past, um, some of our wineries in the area and vineyards dealing with smoke taint. How, how about wine grapes this year? Well, again, I think that we're safe that way. Oregon can, uh, again, be proud of our harvest and uh, the wine that's made from it because the, the skin of the grapes protects uh, any absorption of that material. So I think we're in good shape. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a wine expert, uh, but I believe we're okay there. And I'm sure that the uh, vineyards are going to be washing things extra carefully this year in order to make sure that they're clean. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we're not wine experts a... either, just connoisseurs right. over here. Just big yes. fans. So. <laughs> yeah, no, you, and you mentioned the, uh, the soil. Is there a way to test for, you know, soil contamination when it comes to what we just experienced? Yes, well, you know, uh, you should test your garden soil. If you're a gardener, you should test your soil every so often and maybe not every year. But uh, to do a test, there's labs that are available. Uh, Oregon State used to, uh, with the extension service, test soil. They're not doing that any longer, but there's labs. And so if you're concerned, take a sample and, and turn it in and see what you've got. Uh, the other way, though, uh, to kind of be safe is to just add some additional soil or compost to your garden this year in order to kind of, if there is pollutants, that they would be uh, lessened or, or kind of uh, diluted with the additional soil or compost that you might have. 
Okay, that that seems doable. I, yeah. I'm not as worried about it as I was now. Just yeah. something to watch out for. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, in CO, CO2, the rains, you know, clean the foliage and the plants are breathing again, so that's a great thing. Also, the rain take the CO2 and put it into the soil, and so um, that's there is CO2, and that's a natural thing that happens. So about 30% of that went into the soil, and it's gone. Yeah, okay. It'll just kind of work its way out. All well, right. Drake, always good to see you. And, of course, if people want more gardening advice, we're going to have a link to Drake's 70s Garden Center. It's a fabulous place. We'll put that link on coin.com. Have a good one. Thank you, ladies. Yeah, thank you.